Hey guys, this is Fernando Notari, and this lesson will be on transformations of parent functions. So let's get into it. So before we start, let's just revisit the meaning of f of x. So f of x in simple terms just means a function in terms of x, where x is the input, and for every input there is only one output. And it's essentially this is essentially mathematical notation telling you something is a function, and it can be interchanged with y equals. So what is a transformation? A transformation is just an extra step that has to be taken when an to get an output when an input is plugged in. And transformations are also what makes graphs of functions look different when, than when the parent function is graphed. So here we have a couple examples of transformations. Here we have the parent function f of x is equal to x, or y is equal to x. And here we have the same parent function with both transformations. So here we have to, in order to get an output, you would have to first multiply the value by 2 and then add 1 to it. This function here is called a, is actually called a quadratic function, and this is the parent function. So this, uh, when you do when you elevate this value to the power of two, it doesn't. This is like not considered a transformation, but we'll get into that later. The only transformation here would just be adding four. So next up. Let's just um, review the concept of a linear function. You guys already know that the parent function of a linear function is y is equal to x, and you already know point-slope form, which is y is equal to mx plus b, where, where um, m is the slope, and the b would be the y-intercept. But you could also look at this from a transformations perspective. So the m could represent a vertical stretch or vertical compression, and the b could represent a vertical shift. And we'll get into like what these terms mean later. This is just a different way of looking at the same con at the same operations. So let's just uh, represent this on a table of values to make it easier to understand. Um, so functions of transformations give a different output for the same input. What that means is if you plug in a value in into the parent function, let's say you plug in zero, you're gonna get zero as an output in this case in the case of the parent function y is equal to x if you plug in one you get one that's fairly self-explanatory but here you would have to go through extra extra steps so and you and you would actually get a different output so let's see we plug in zero again you'd have to first multiply by three and then which will give you zero and then you have to add two and that's why we got two as an output rather than zero again and the same thing when you plug in one three times one is one plus two five Wait, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Sorry about that. Okay, so now let's look at these same functions, but graphically. As you guys can see, the graph of the parent function looks fairly familiar, and also the next one also looks familiar, but you guys can see how multiplying the input by 3 and then adding 2 to it will greatly like change the way a graph looks. And this would be even better, it would be even better to understand this when we get into the next types of functions. So, the next types of functions. Let's first get into the quadratic function. So the parent function of a quadratic function is y is equal to x squared. And it is called the quadratic because you square whatever input you plug in on the parent function. However, you, as you guys can see here, there are a bunch of transformations that you can add to this function, just as you can add to any type of parent function. So first, the A stands for the horizontal stretch or horizontal compression. And it will be better represented on a graph, so we'll revisit this concept later. The h is just a horizontal shift. You're moving your graph either to the right or to the left. So you're changing, um, you're just shifting it straight up from the left to the right. So if you have here the graph of a function, a, a line, if you want to add, let's say you put, you put um, a random number in for h, it is going to change, it's going to shift the, um, line with this is the original line and it's going to shift it either to the right let's do a little dash dotted line here or it's going to shift it to the left depending on what value you plug in so and now here we have k which is vertical shift which is a vertical shift and it is the same time same concept as the horizontal shift except that um you're shifting it up and down rather than left and right and you always have to do transformations in the same order so first comes the first transformation you have to do is a horizontal shift, which is h. After that, you do the horizontal the the horizontal stretch or vertical compression, which is um, a. 
And then lastly, you have to do the vertical shift, which is K. K and H here are just constants, so is A. So you, they just stand for numbers. You can plug in any random number there and, it's, and it should give you um, a function. Now, let's look at a numerical representation. So think about the, fun the transformation in the previous slide. The parent function here is y is equal to x squared, so this is a quadratic function. You should plug in negative 1 for x, you just square the term, you get 1 for y, and that is your output. Plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 1, you get 1. Now let's look at the transformations on this next graph. If you plug in one, negative 1, no, this is just 1. If you plug in 1 for h, uh, you would get an, uh, 2 for k. You get a certain, you get a different output for the same inputs. So let's look at zero again. If you plug in zero for x, you have an, you still have a negative one here. So you have to square the negative one to get a one plus two, so you get three as an output. And so same goes for one. We one put one minus one is zero, so you just get zero inside the parentheses here. So you just this becomes zero after you square it, and you still add two, so you get two. You plug in two. 2 minus 1 is 1, squared plus 2, 3. Now let's look at it differently. So let's look at a vertical compression or a vertical stretch, but from a graphical perspective. So the parent function is the blue graph, which is y is equal to x squared. For every x value you plug in, you're going you're gonna to get a one specific y value here. I'm going to draw over it with a red marker. This is your parent function. When you plug in negative 1, you get 1. When you plug in negative 2, you're eventually going to get 4 up here. Sorry, you guys can see that. Same thing goes here. You plug in 2, you get 4. And that is essentially what the parabola looks like. This is called a parabola. Now, let's let's mess with the vertical stretch and the horizontal, and the horizontal compression here. Uh, so the red graph, which is this one, if you guys can see it, which is this one. As you can see, it was um, vertically stretched or horizontally compressed, whatever you want to call it. So it's essentially for every x value you plug in, and after you square it, you have to multiply it by two. So let's say I, I plugged in one right here. At one squared is just one, however, which would be here, but however, you would have to multiply that answer by two, so it is actually up here now. And that is what causes the transformation of a parent function when you're talking about or about vertical compression or, or, or a vertical stretch. So now, lastly, we have the green graph here, which is um, which is y is equal to 0.5x. Now that would be a compression because instead of instead of making it thinner, you're making it a little fatter. So now, let's say you plug in 1. It should be here, of course, as a parent function states. However, you have to multiply that by 0 0.5 or multiply that by a half. So actually, instead of the answer being 1, the answer is 0 0.5. No, I'm going. This is also a graphical representation of, parent func of, a, of the quadratic function. But now we also have a horizontal and vertical shifts. So now, this is, of course, a parent function. y is equal to x squared. And now we have y is equal to x minus 1 squared plus 2. So always remember that you have to do the um, horizontal stretch first. No, sorry. The horizontal shift first. And then if you have a horizontal stretch or, a comp or a compression, of sorry, vertical stretch or compression, you do a second. And lastly, you do the vertical shift, which is k. And now here we only have an h and a k. So let's do let's see how this works. Instead, when we plug in one, you do one minus one, which is zero squared, still zero plus two, so you get a two here. And this is just PEMDAS. That's why um you have this order. You just have to follow the standard order of operations, and that is what causes the parabola to go from here, which would be the its original the the parent original parent function to here. The, to this green line now. And that is essentially what transformations do. So now, in the previous lesson, we discussed functions in programming. And of course, you can still model more complicated functions with code. So for example, we have the parent, we have the 
function y is equal to 2 times x plus 2 squared plus 1 in Python, which is, of course, a quadratic function represented in programming. So as long as we keep proper syntax and um, where the, as the little asterisk here stands for multiplication and the double asterisks stand for raising something to the power of, so let's just do this to make it simpler to understand. You can still um, model the, you can still properly model the function as long as you properly use like parentheses and, st and stuff like that to properly express the order of operations. And the function will result the expected values for each input. So let's test this out. Here we have um, two as an example. You plug in two for x, you're going to get two plus two. For, for the first thing you would do is two plus two which is four. You do that to the power of two, four to the power of two is 16. Multiply that by two, you're gonna get 32. And then lastly, you add one and you get 33 as an answer. And Python, as you can see, gives the, the value right, right back to you. If you plug in negative five, it, it would also be the same procedure. You just plug negative five in for x, and Python will give you 19, which is the correct answer if, it, if you try and do it on paper, but I would trust Python personally. So thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys next time.